Hello everybody, I'm so excited to be back here today with Ernie to talk a little bit about brushing your drop-coated breed or your English Cocker Spaniel. Depending on the individual dog, they can have quite a bit of coat. So selecting the right brush to use is pretty important. You can check out um, our video about how to choose the right brush for your dog. Um, and it'll be linked below as well. But now that we have our dog ready to be brushed, um, something I just wanted to mention really quickly is whenever your dog is on the grooming table, you want it to be a very positive experience. So throughout this brushing session with Ernie, he's going to get lots of snacks and cookies um, just to reinforce that this is a good, positive, happy experience. So. Let's start that off, shall we, Ernie? The first thing that we wanna do is put moisture back into the coat. So Ernie got a bath two days ago and he's still fairly clean. He did go for a walk this morning in the woods, so he has a few burrs that we'll be picking out. But we wanna add some moisture back into the coat so that the hair is less likely to break. The dry coat mixed with the brush isn't always the best. So the first thing we're gonna do is just spray um, the coat with whatever you like. It can just be water or conditioner and water diluted, or if you have a particular favorite product that's meant for dogs, um, you can go ahead and spray that at that moment. Then I'm going to be just taking my Chris Christensen slicker brush um, that we've talked about before and start brushing his coat. So I'm going to start at the front left leg and begin to brush. Right now those pins of the brush are reaching pretty far down, but I want to get at it from every angle. So I'm brushing backwards on the outside of the leg, and then I'm going to kind of turn the leg slightly, still making sure he's comfortable, and get the inside of the leg. If your dog's comfortable, you can pick up that foot and put your finger right on that dew claw pad so you're not scratching it with a brush, and you can brush from right behind that point as well. Then I'm going to be moving on to the skirt portion of the dog, and Brushing down, he has a lot of skin, so I'm going to kind of be holding that taut so that it's just more comfortable for him and not all of his skin is being pulled down with that brush. Good boy, Ernie. So there's not a lot of tangles in his coat right now, but if there were, I would want to take my hand and hold that tangle between the skin and where it is. So if there was a tangle right here, I'm holding the hair so that just like on our own heads, it's not pulling right on the skin. We're kind of holding that pressure away from the dog. Then I'm working down his leg. You can see I'm working on the outside, but I also want to get the inside because that's where a lot of those mats and knots and tangles may form. There's some dirt flying off him, some little birds that got stuck in his coat from our walk in the woods this morning, and all those things, getting them out right now after we walked is a great idea. If they were left in there, he might try to pull them out with his teeth, and his saliva, licking his coat and everything, would just tangle it more and make it worse. So we've got that back leg. We've got that skirt on the side all done. Now we're moving back to his other front leg.
So he has some birds in his ears right now. I'm going to be holding and supporting that ear while taking my brush and brushing the outside. This front portion of an English Cocker's ear tends to get a little uh, gross sometimes because it tends to get in their lip or after they eat or anything. If they're not wearing a snood while they eat, um, that portion often gets moisture and gets the dirtiest the fastest. After we've fully brushed out our dog, we're gonna go back in with a comb to all the sections we just completed. Um, I have a Greyhound comb right here um, with wide spacing and fine spacing, and I'm gonna take that fine section and go through the entire coat everywhere that I brushed, just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, my slicker brush has pretty wide spaced pins, so, in case there was anything that I missed, I will find it when I'm using my comb. And that's it. We hope that you were able to gain a better grasp of the importance of brushing all parts of your dogs and not missing a single tangle or snarl that your dog may have gotten. It's really important to brush your dog on a regular basis to prevent matting and just uncomfortable tangles that your dog may get. <laughs> when your dog has a tangle or a mat, it actually pulls on their skin and causes a lot of discomfort. It's kind of like walking around and someone's constantly like pulling on your head, on your hair and that connects to your head and it's just, it's not comfortable. It's not nice. So brush your dog regularly and make sure that their coat is nice and clean regularly. Um, always brushing before you bathe. When a mat or tangle gets wet, it's gonna become worse and harder to untangle. So always brushing with some moisture before they actually get wet in the bath and brushing them regularly so that they can be clean and when they are clean, the coat tangles less um, because those dirt, <laughs> dirt particles and everything often tangle with the hair and then that just makes the whole situation worse. So if we're able to keep that coat clean, it'll be easier to keep it tangle free as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you, see <laughs> we'll see you soon. Don't forget to live free and live fully every day.